Hey everyone, welcome to Break It Yourself. Today, we're gonna be making another magic mirror. I don't know if you're like me, but the first time I saw this, I just thought, man, that is such a convenient way to see the weather, the temperature, your calendar, really anything you can dream up, you can add to this magic mirror so that you can see just at a glance. And some people hated on the last video that I made saying, you have a phone, just check your phone. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm trying to cut down on screen time. I know, you know, I could just open my phone and check these things, but I'm really going for convenience. My other magic mirror is set up in the kitchen area where I eat breakfast. So I can eat breakfast. I can just look up, see my calendar, see the time, see the weather. Very convenient. Thought I'd go ahead and add one on top of the dresser in here, just so much less information versus the other one that I have. So I'm just showing calendar, temperature, and time. I think it came out awesome. I love the LED lights around the outside, but let's get started and I'll show you how I built mine. Now the things that you're gonna need to get started, you're going to need about a six foot one by six piece of pine. And I said in the last video, I'm just using cheap pine. And that was before the price of wood skyrocketed. So I'm not sure how much that costs these days, but it can't be more than like 10, 15 US dollars. So go out, grab one of those. You also, depending on how you're gonna make it, you could probably have the big box store make the cuts for you. I saw some other people say in the previous video, hey, I'm out, I'm not gonna be able to make this frame. So I went with a frameless version this time. I think it looks a lot cleaner, much more forgiving if you maybe have to use a handsaw, you're not great with power tools, so you're not gonna have to do miters or anything like that. So this was much easier when it comes to actually doing your cut. So you're gonna need your piece of wood. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi. You're also going to need a two-way mirror. That is probably the most important part and there are some things that I wanna tell you about the two-way mirror. I would definitely get a glass two-way mirror. You can do acrylic. They can flex and warp and distort the image and so maybe from up close, you're not gonna see that, but definitely from far away, if you look at that acrylic mirror, it's gonna look funny. So I highly recommend that you go out and actually get a glass one. And before I go any further, I picked this one up off of Amazon. My previous video, I went to a glass shop. I got a custom piece of glass. It was awesome, but I wanted to just go on Amazon, purchase everything from Amazon and build this. So that's what I did in this one, except for the piece of wood. I just went, I'll put a link in the description to the one that I got exactly, but it's a standard size. And then they go ahead and ship it to you in just a couple of days. You're also gonna need an HDMI cable to connect your Raspberry Pi to the monitor and you're going to need a monitor. For this build, I wanted to do something that you could recycle, like an old monitor that you have. So in this case, I had an Asus monitor. I went ahead and took it apart and that's what I used as the screen inside of this magic mirror. So if you've got an old monitor laying around, by all means, take it apart or check like Facebook Marketplace, Let Go, something like that. See if you can pick up an old monitor. My, I just missed out on one. My neighbor had one out on the street the other day and I had missed it and it got rained on, unfortunately. But this one, you could go with a brand new monitor, spend maybe a hundred bucks. This total build, the Raspberry Pi is about 60 US dollars, depending on supply and demand and that kind of stuff, usually about 60 bucks. The piece of glass that I paid for was 150 US dollars, so you're at 210 right now. And then depending on your monitor cost, so I'll say maybe an average of $100 for a monitor, hopefully free if you have one. So about $310 plus your piece of wood. So let's say you could get this done for less than 350 US dollars. Before I go any further, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and then go ahead and subscribe down below. Also, I don't do an amazing job of doing follow-up videos on YouTube, but I do document almost everything that I do over on Instagram. So if you're interested in that, be sure to go over to Instagram, give me a follow over there. 
Now, first things first, let's go ahead and disassemble the monitor. I'm using this pry kit that I actually got to do stuff in my car. I'll also link that in the description below, but it's these plastic pry pieces. It's really worked great and it helped me take apart this Asus monitor really no problem. So I went ahead, took the monitor apart, undid all the screws, and it just left me with the display panel and that's all that I want. I don't want the plastic frame of the monitor to come in contact with the mirror, which would then offset the display panel away from the monitor. I want the display panel and, and the mirror to be flush up against each other. So I'm taking the frame completely off the monitor and I'm getting that display panel and I'm putting it directly onto the mirror. In addition to that, I'm ripping my boards down to make a little frame to go around that display panel from that monitor. In my last video, I made that frame that kind of held the mirror and the TV together. And this one, I went on Amazon and I found some mirror clips. They just hold the mirror from the bottom and from the top. And I was a little skeptical, but they ended up working out awesome. I mean, they do a great job. You don't have to silicone or glue anything. You just build your frame and you take those clips, you screw them into your frame and then they hold the glass on. So your frame might be different than mine. I just kind of custom made mine to go around the display panel as best I could. And then your limiting factor for your depth of this mirror is going to be all of your cabling. So if you could get, at least on my monitor, the HDMI is directly straight out perpendicular to the monitor, which is not ideal. So I've got a 90 degree um, HDMI little elbow that I'm using to help me get closer to the wall. I'm still not as close as I wanted to be. The thickness of my mirror is two inches, but that accommodates all of my cable management inside. And then I've got between the LED lights, the Raspberry Pi and the monitor, I have three plugs in there that need to be plugged in. So I am just gonna use either a mini power strip or, or some type of way to plug them all in inside of the mirror. And I'm gonna run one little extension cord out from the mirror just so that it's much cleaner for cable management. Unless you're doing it like this on the dresser where you're like, hey, I don't care if I have three cables coming down behind the dresser, no issue. But if you wanted to like mount it somewhere to look really nice, you might wanna consider that. Also for this build, I was originally going to put this into a bathroom and I had bought a this little heating pad. These things are awesome. So if your bathroom fogs up like steam from the shower, this little heating pad will prevent the mirror from fogging up. We have it in our current bathroom now. It's awesome. I just like mismeasured or something and the monitor that I have and the piece of glass that I have, there's no spare room at all to fit this little pad, but I'll link the pad in the description as well. So if you wanted to do something like this in your bathroom, I, I thought it would be awesome in there just to see the time and stuff as I'm getting ready in the morning, but the this dresser works just as, just as good. But if you wanted to put in a bathroom and you're interested in that pad, definitely check it out. The only drawback to that pad that I saw is that it's white. Kind of everything that you put behind that mirror, you usually want to be black. So you could probably spray paint it and it would be fine, but I did just want to mention that, that I think if you're going to, shoot for a bathroom, definitely look into this. I know people are gonna immediately jump to the comments and say, oh, well, all the steam is gonna destroy your electronics. Probably, yes. Over time, if you have that much steam, it's probably gonna destroy the electronics. But I wanted to give it a shot, but uh, we're gonna be out here in the main bedroom. Once I got my frame built, I went ahead and spray painted it black. So you also will need to get some spray paint for a few bucks just because anything that's on the back side of that mirror, I want to be a dark uniform color so that if the monitor is off or anything like that, that you don't see anything kind of through the two way mirror because you can kind of see just a little bit. So if everything is black and uniform, it's gonna look just like a normal mirror and people will not know that it's a two way mirror. 
So I spray painted my wood black and it's really hard to even see the difference between the display panel and the piece of wood right next to each other when they're on that back side of that glass. So I highly recommend that. Also to fit my clamps to hold the mirror on, I don't think you have to do this, but I inlaid them into the wood just so that everything was nice and flat and uniform. I don't think that's a required step. It's definitely a little more advanced on the woodworking side. You know, if you're just gonna be able to cut the wood and that's it, then you don't necessarily need to do it. But if you're interested in inlaying them, instead of getting like an actual dado stack for your table saw, you could just use the blade that you have in there and make a bunch of one eighth and one eighth inch cuts to slowly make that inlay so that you could lay that clamp in there. I'm just gonna full disclosure, tell you exactly what I did, but I inlaid the clamps so that everything would be flush on the wood. Now, the last thing that I was having to figure out was how do I hold the display panel up against the glass? So I've got, because of the clamps, I've got a way to hold the wooden frame and the mirror together, but how do I get this display panel to also sit flush? So I took three pieces of scrap wood and I notched them so that they could then screw into the frame and also hold that back panel in on three sides. So my panel is actually in uh, portrait, not landscape. So you can do whichever you like. You can just go into the settings in your Raspberry Pi and you can select portrait or landscape. But I went with portrait. So I'm only supporting it on the bottom side and on the right and left side. The top is unsupported. So you could theoretically either remove the panel vertically or you can just unscrew the screws from those pieces of wood and take your panel off that way if you need to. The last thing that I wanted to try on this build was something just a little bit different. I wanted to add these LED lights around the outside of the mirror just to see what it would look like. I think it came out awesome. It's a really subtle little accent. When I have the normal lights on, you can hardly see it. Um, it was just something that I wanted to do that was different. These are just um, bright white. They don't change colors, but you could do like a color accent or something like that. I think it really came out great. So I'll also link that in the description as well. Now I'm not going to get into in this video how to set up your Raspberry Pi and Magic Mirror. I've already done a video on that. So go ahead and check that video out somewhere up above here if you want to know how to set up the Raspberry Pi, how to get your Magic Mirror going, and then how to do modules. So in this one, it's very standard. I've got the default modules and then I added one little logo module just to show um, my Break It Yourself logo because I thought it kind of looked cool. But other than that, it's very standard. If you're interested, you can go to the Magic Mirror website, which I'll also link in the description. The modules that they have, I mean, they have hundreds of modules and they are incredible, the things that you can do. So almost anything you can dream up, they have. If you care about theme park wait times, they have a module for that. If you wanna see some pictures up there, they've got a module for that. You have a Nest thermostat, an Ecobee thermostat. You can throw that information up there. Commute times, all kinds of information that would be really helpful. I know a lot of people say, eh, you can just use your phone. I understand. I think this is cool. And I think there's other people out there that also think it's cool. I hope this video was helpful for you showing my magic mirror build. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to thumbs me up and we will see you next time.